My name's Doug. I've been a member of the FreeBSD project for a really long time, nearly 30 years. It's scary. Um, I want to talk about my experiences running OCI containers on FreeBSD. But first of all, let's think about a bit of history. I'm not going to cover OS level virtualization in detail. That's a much bigger talk. But this is a, some of the highlights as they relate to FreeBSD. The CH root system port, which provides a level of virtualization, very basic in the file system, that was added to version 7 Unix a really long time ago. Um, version 7 Unix was the base for BSD from its earliest um, history. So all BSDs, including OpenBSD, NetBSD, any Dragonfly BSD, they all have CH root. Um, but CH root by itself is limited. It doesn't provide very good isolation between workloads. So later on, the jail system was added to FreeBSD by Paul Henning Camp. This augments CH root to provide better isolation and restrictions on sensitive system, system calls. It had, in its initial um, form, it had limited support for uh, networking where you could supply it IP addresses for each jail and the jails were restricted to using just the IP addresses that were given to them and couldn't use other IP addresses either from the host or from other jails. That was kind of limiting. So a bit later on, we got a fully virtualized network stack. Um, this is very similar in, in a lot of ways to Linux network namespaces and gives enough flexibility for um, much more complicated network setups. So alongside this, things were evolving all, all over the place and we ended up with Docker appearing around 2014-15. And there was actually a port of Docker to FreeBSD at that time. It even made it into the Docker source tree, but it was only briefly, and it got removed in a cleanup pass. I'm not really sure what happened there, but you know, I, I remember it um, existing. It was based on jails for isolation, OpenZFS for um, storage management. Don't think it had networking, but it was interesting. Much later on, um, I heard about the RunJ project, which was Samuel Karp, who's a member of the OCI community. He's going to be around this week, I think. So um, he wrote RunJ. RunJ is a, a, an OCI runtime based on FreeBSD using jails for isolation. And um, this is pretty exciting because it supported container D. You could actually run real, real workloads on FreeBSD using standard OCI tools. Now, a little bit before this, I tried to port Builder to FreeBSD and got stuck at the OCI runtime part. So I was kind of excited here. So I picked up my, my failed port and tried to make it work using RunJ. Had some, a lot of success with that in Builder. I ended up writing my own runtime, mostly to get better compatibility with the Podman and Builder um, stacks. But RunJ was an inspiration to me. And um, I ended up being able to get both Builder and Podman running quite well on FreeBSD. There were some challenges along the way. I had written one line of code in Go before I started this, so that was kind of fun. Lots of acronyms, OCI, CNI. Um, jails, I'd sort of used them, but I didn't really understand fully how they worked, so there was a learning curve there. The code base for Podman and Builder is kind of complex. It's spread across multiple repositories. There's hundreds of dependencies, a lot of which didn't actually work properly on FreeBSD. So by the time I built a prototype, I had changed it across the whole stack. And that was kind of interesting trying to figure out how to upstream that so that I didn't have to maintain forks of a dozen projects. Big challenge was merging those changes. It's quite a, uh, an invasive change in a lot of ways. Thousands of lines of code changing in Podman trying to merge this upstream without breaking Podman. That was an important thing for me. Coming in to somebody else's project and breaking it is rude. So the, the basic approach I took was to, first of all, make the project build. It doesn't have to work. So find all the places that simply cannot build on FreeBSD and factor them out in, in, a, in a way that allows FreeBSD to build, but without making any functional changes on the Linux side. And once that works, then iteratively take pieces from my prototypes, turn them into 
pull requests that can be reviewed individually. Iterate on that, try and reduce the amount of copied code between the FreeBSD and Linux side so that we have maximum code sharing between the two platforms. That took a long time, probably most of, well, probably I'm gonna say six months to get everything reviewed and merged upstream. But from today, both Builder and Podman build out of the box without any patches and work fine on FreeBSD. Along the way, I found some bugs in FreeBSD itself, so I had to fix those as well. It helps that I've used uh, FreeBSD for a long time, and I've worked on the FreeBSD kernel for a long time, so I found a few bugs, a um, few fa missing features, like um, Podman expects to be able to mount individual files into containers. That wasn't possible, so I made it possible. I found bugs in the FreeBSD packet filter. They were difficult to debug and even more difficult for the changes to get reviewed, but we got it done. And, and now we have a, a working system. So let's try and do a little demo. Does that work? Just about. Okay. So this is just a VM running, running FreeBSD. You'll notice it's running as root. We don't have user namespaces in FreeBSD and probably won't have them for a long time. So well, these are rootful containers and will be until that changes. All the usual commands work, image management, I can run containers. Sorry, typing one-handed. This was one of the first images that I created. So I just took, took the container file for the hello world thing and changed it around a tiny bit. We can run more complicated things. TTY. So this is a container. I haven't shown you the host's mount namespace, but I'm going to tell you that this is a small subset of it. The um, Dales provide um, redaction for some namespaces rather than full namespace isolation. So for PID namespaces, um, the container can see its own PIDs, but it can't see the host PIDs. You'll notice that it's not running with PID1 because we don't have PID namespaces. It's the shared namespace, but with a redacted view. Um, but we can support the usual functionality. We can detach from the container. We can attach back again, and it all works as expected, if I can type correctly. Okay, I'm doing something wrong. Oh yes, attack. <laughs> okay, yeah, so I can attach back to my container. This all works the same, is managed by Conmon in exactly the same way as on, on Linux. Um, so that's cool. Uh, what else can we do? We can run Linux containers. I'm not sure whether this is a good idea. Um, I think it depends on your relationship with the vendor of that image, whether it's a, something they would support. But, you know, it works. So I override the OS for the image fetch. And you know, I can assure you that's the Linux binaries running, not the FreeBSD binaries. I could be faking it, but I promise I'm not.
Okay, that's about it for demos. <laughs> Let's. Okay, future work. Um, whoa, something happened. So we've recently created a working group to formalize the um, FreeBSD extension to the OCI runtime spec. Um, this is going to help us define exactly what we want to support in OCI runtime for FreeBSD and make sure that the two runtimes and the, and the people associated with them agree on how it should be done. So this is important uh, work. Um, for me, I'd like to um, get support for FreeBSD into CRIO. It's a cryo, I mean. Um, I have a working prototype. We've started the process of merging that work, but it's it's going to take a, uh, some time to get that in. I have working versions of Kubernetes components. I mean, the control stack, that already worked. It's not doing anything special. But um, I have ports of Kubelet and Kubeproxy. And in my lab at home, I'm able to run a fully native FreeBSD Kubernetes cluster at a very small scale. Again, merging that stuff is going to take some time, partly for me understanding how the process should work for um, making changes to Kubernetes. Any questions? Just because I'm curious about the uh, the need to implement a additional runtime, uh, was that because you were focusing on targeting uh, Podman and Builda, which uh, I believe do not use the Containerd shim interface, right? So you had to implement something that was a Run C compatible CLI. So there were several things going on to the form, form that decision. Um, the expectations of how the various methods would work were slightly different in Podman. It wanted some, uh, some entry points to be present. It wanted things like exec to work in a specific way. It needed, you know, there were a few things that Run Jade hadn't supported that um, was expected by the, the engine. Um, I had a conversation with Sam and Sam, Sam's wanted to make sure that he was in control of the RunJ project because it was a learning tool for him, and I didn't want to disturb that. So rather than bother Sam with pull requests for things that only I care about, I decided to just break the chain, um, write, write a simple runtime in C++, which I could understand, uh, where I could have a quick turnaround time, and basically make forward progress. There's no necessarily, it's not necessarily a need for that runtime to exist once we finish the standardization process, but we'll see how that turns out. Does that answer your question? Awesome. Uh, thank you very much. Um, and again, if you're interested in discussing this, interested in porting, you know, OCI to FreeBSD, et cetera, um, please talk to Doug either at lunch or at the open tables this afternoon. Is anybody working on Illumos now? There's a guy that was, <laughs> that, there was a guy, there, there was a guy I've forgotten his name. Uh, if you, Michael Dexter should be around th this week. He will be able to tell you, but you know, the, there is an effort to write a runtime on Illumos. There was an Oracle owned runtime, which is not open source as far as I know, but it, it, it's a proof of concept if you like. So I think it's possible. Certainly, um, Solaris zones are, have in, enough flexibility to do the job, as far as I can tell. So thank you very much, Doug.